so it's kind of been like half a month since my last video and like always i have a brilliant understandable reason for why i've been gone so today's video is going to be the guide to the catacombs of hypixel skyblock where the dungeons lie a majority of the game's best weapons such as the livid dagger giant sword or the iconic hyperion can only be obtained through chests found in the catacombs which is divided into eight total floors and eight bosses I will be covering floors entrance to 6, including each level's respective puzzle rooms, new challenges that you will face as you climb higher, and the best way to defeat the boss. Floor 7 will get its own special video, probably coming out next week. Let's start with the entrance floor. This is the lowest floor of the catacombs, as well as the easiest. You probably won't play this floor more than like 2 times, but for first time players, this is your introduction to dungeons, with a minimal combat level of 15 required to enter. There are five possible puzzles that can appear in the entrance. Tic-tac-toe is pretty self-explanatory. You will face an AI who will always go first. You can complete the puzzle by either winning or having it end in a tie. If you lose the match, you will fail the puzzle. There's also a secret you can grab. The teleport maze puzzle seems daunting at first, but a foolproof way to complete it is to walk diagonally every time. Eventually, you will reach the middle. It is impossible to fail this puzzle. The three weirdos puzzle is probably the hardest puzzle in entrance. I didn't have the IQ to solve this puzzle legitimately when I was running entrance, and I still don't, which is why I rely on a solver to complete three weirdos. Creeper beams are relatively simple. A beam will match every pair of beacons you shoot, and you need a total of four beams matched to complete the puzzle. The beams must cross the creeper in the middle, and this cannot be failed. The final puzzle that appears on the entrance is waterboard. Each of these levers corresponds to blocks of the same kind, and when flicked, a piston will either push or pull all blocks of that kind on the board. The lever in the middle triggers a channel of water, and the goal is to open all doors. You can open or close the doors by having water travel into the corresponding hole. The boss of the entrance is the Watcher, a giant eye that summons powerful mobs. The Watcher's health bar will drop with each mob killed, and when all summoned mobs are killed, the Watcher will be defeated, signaling the end of the entrance run. Floor 1 is very similar to the entrance floor. You will need Catacombs Level 1, which you can obtain by playing the entrance. The dungeon itself is only slightly bigger than the entrance, with only one major difference. Once you defeat the Watcher, the portal that spawns will transport you to a new room, where you will face the first major boss of the Catacombs, the new necromancer, Bonzo, who looks like you when you get back together with your ex. Well, for you Skyblock players, step 1 is to get a girlfriend first. Bonzo has two phases. In his first phase, he will run around the arena, summoning undead zombie-type mobs and shooting wither skulls. In his second phase, Bonzo will change into his clown form and will gain a melee attack. He will also shoot balloons instead of wither skulls, but otherwise this attack is the same as the wither skull attack in his first phase. Bonzo's most terrifying damage comes from his balloon barrage, where he will teleport into the middle of the arena and shoot balloons in all directions. The best way to defeat Bonzo is to avoid his projectile damage, either by dodging or hiding behind the pillars in the arena. Being on top of the pillars will not protect you from Bonzo, as it is still within his range. You should also attempt to keep your distance to avoid his melee attacks, and the following drops are exclusive to and obtainable upon completing Floor 1. You will need a minimum Catacombs level of 3 to enter Floor 2, which introduces a new puzzle and again a slightly larger dungeon. Higher or Lower, better known as the Blaze Puzzle, makes its debut in Floor 2 of the Catacombs, and is probably the most failed puzzle of all time. So, you're here today to discuss some issues with trauma or something? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, and where did this trauma originate from? Hypixel Skyblock. Hi, uh, what? Uh, it's Hypixel Skyblock. Okay, um, you stated before that this Hypixel Skyblock was the same reason you continue to be a lonely loser with no friends. Yeah. Wait, I don't remember saying that last part. Alright, and how does this image make you feel? <laughs> okay, the solution seems relatively simple. All you have to do is just not play the game for a few days, and if you can, meditate with uh, a few minutes a day with some cherry blossom incense. Cherry blossom? That's what your wife smells like! Indeed. Wait, how do you know what my wife smells like? The concept of the blaze puzzle is simple. There are 10 total blazes, and if the chest is on the bottom, you have to kill them in order of lowest to highest health. If the chest is at the top, you have to kill them in order of highest to lowest. There is also a secret in this puzzle room. Floor 2 is guarded by Scarf, the apprentice necromancer. Scarf, like Bonzo, has two phases. In his first phase, he will be protected by a barrier. 
The four tombs around the room will summon undead, which correspond to the dungeon classes Healer, Archer, Berserker, and Mage. They all have their own unique combo of attacks, but once they are all defeated, the second phase will begin. In this phase, Scarf's Barrier drops and the undead mobs will spawn again, this time stronger than before. You should target the Priest first, because he will heal Scarf continuously if not killed. Scarf has three attacks. The first is his default melee attack. The second is his Soul Sand Blizzard, which deals true damage. This means if a player comes into contact with it, its damage will ignore defense. His third attack, Skull Barrage, is very similar to Bonzo's Balloon Barrage. They travel rapidly in all directions. You can hide behind walls to attempt to dodge them, but I have witnessed these skulls travel through walls before. So, um, take that how you will. The following drops are exclusive to and obtainable upon completing Floor 2. Floor 3's dungeon is just as big as Floor 2, but contains three new puzzles that can appear, as well as being the first floor that has the trap room. Floor 3 has a minimum catacombs level requirement of 5. The boulder puzzle has a random assortment of boxes that can be pushed when you press a button on the opposite side. The goal is to push the boxes in a fashion that clears a path to the chest in the back of the room. This puzzle is not failable, but it is possible to push the boxes in a way that makes it impossible to reach the chest. Iceville has three stages, each being progressively harder. You can complete a stage by turning all the ice into packed ice, which you can do by walking over it, where you can only walk onto a block of ice once. If you attempt to walk on a block you've already walked on before, the ice will break and you will have to start over. You also cannot move diagonally, and if you move too fast, the game will think that you are moving diagonally. You cannot fail this puzzle and have an infinite amount of attempts. Finally, Floor 3 introduces the Ice Path Puzzle, also known as the Silverfish Puzzle. By punching a silverfish, it will move in a straight path in the direction you punched it in until it hits a wall. The path of the silverfish is the same every time, so all you have to do is memorize this pattern. The puzzle is completed by guiding the silverfish into the cage, where it will blow up and allow you to open the chest within. This puzzle can be failed if you attempt to cheese it in any way, or if you somehow kill the silverfish, which is possible, but I really have no clue how it happens. Finally, we get to the trap room. Trap room comes in two variants, one with three total secrets and one with four total secrets, and I will show you how to cheese both variants. Okay, so this is the official Good Guy Kev tutorial on how to cheese the four secret trap. The first thing you want to do is blow up this crypt. You can either use your guided sheep or super boom TNT and kill this crypt undead. Now from here you have two options. You can either try to stonk through this wall while walking into it to create ghost blocks and grab the chest once it becomes visible. Or you can turn your pickaxe into a ghost pickaxe which allows you to literally just mine the blocks like this and create ghost blocks very easily. And then grab the chests like that. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to cheese the three secret trap room. For this cheese, you're going to need the rabbit hat, which you can pick up off the auction house. You also need either a efficiency 10 pickaxe or a stonk and legendary silverfish. It doesn't matter which, they both serve the same function. The first thing you're going to do is put on the rabbit hat and you can turn your pickaxe into a ghost pick. Come down to this corner over here and grab this chest. From here, you want to walk up to this ledge and flick this lever, jump up here, ghost block all these blocks up here and jump up. From here, you wanna jump up onto this ledge and ghost block these blocks. And then you wanna un-ghost block them when you jump up here. Then you wanna mine these blocks, covering up the chest and just jump and grab the chest like that. And then you wanna come up onto this stair and just mine downward and you can exit trap. Floor 3's boss is the Professor. The Professor boss fight has three stages. In the first stage, the Professor himself will be protected by a barrier and four guardians will spawn in tanks around the room. Among these are the Laser Guardian, which will fire a beam that deals continuous knockback and around 3% of a player's health as true damage for around 10 seconds. After this, it will overheat and cool down before firing again. The Healthy Guardian can perform what is called the Giga Heal, which brings every guardian in the room to full health. Landing 10 or more hits before the timer is up will break its focus and block the heal. The Reinforced Guardian has additional health compared to the other Guardians and will drop TNT every so often, which can be difficult to avoid. The Chaos Guardian is the most dangerous of all four. Above its head is an Anger Meter. If you get too close to the Chaos Guardian when it's at full anger, it will basically instantly kill you. 
The Guardians will respawn with less health 10 seconds after being downed, but the first phase will end if all Guardians are downed. In his second phase, the Professor's Barrier will drop and he will attack in a similar fashion to Scarf. When he is at 25% health, he will teleport to the middle of the arena where his final phase will begin. He will absorb the dead Guardians and become a Guardian himself. He is able to use all of the movesets of the original four Guardians and spawn rogue Guardians around the room. The best strategy in the third phase is to have the team gather in the middle so the Professor doesn't move around and do as much DPS as possible. If the fight goes on for too long, the arena will begin to flood with water. Once the Professor is defeated, Necron will smite him with lightning, signaling the completion of Floor 3. The following drops are exclusive to and obtainable upon completing Floor 3. Floor 4, with its minimum Catacombs level requirement of 9, will bring a larger dungeon size and a new puzzle. In the quiz puzzle room, a statue will ask a total of 3 questions. The puzzle is completed if all 3 questions are answered correctly, but it will fail if a question is answered incorrectly. The boss fight of Floor 4 is infamous for being notoriously difficult and time-consuming, and for good reasoning. Floor 4 introduces Shaman Necromancer Thorn, who's a vegetarian. That alone should be enough to convict him of several war crimes. Thorn's fight only has a single phase, and with the proper techniques, this battle shouldn't be too daunting. There are several different spirit animals that spawn in the arena, but there's only two that you should really be concerned about. The bats and the chickens. Oh my god, not, not the chickens. No, 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 no. The, the chickens. N never again. Oh, you're back. And for the second time today. The spirit bats will swarm players in the air and follow players who stay for too long up in the stands of the arena. These can be easily dealt with by placing decoys as the bats cannot destroy the decoys. The chickens will fall slowly from the sky and do 25% of a player's health as true damage if a player gets too close to it. This means no matter what kind of gear or EHP you have, four chickens being close to you can instantly kill you. The best way to deal with the chickens is either kill them while they're in the air, or simply avoid them and let them descend onto the ground. Once they hit the ground, they will turn into non-moving chicken mines that deal damage and knockback. The mini boss will spawn when 100 spirit mobs are killed, and the progress is marked by the sea lantern ring that surrounds the arena. The spirit bear is equipped with a sword and bow and heals slowly over time. When killed, it will drop a Spirit Bow, the only weapon that can damage Thorn. Once picked up, the player has only one shot to hit Thorn, and the bow will disintegrate once a single arrow has been fired. Thorn must be hit a total of four times, and with each hit, will travel faster around the arena, making him harder and harder to hit each time. This is the primary challenge for Floor 4, and the reason why Floor 4 takes so long. For every time a player misses a shot with the Spirit Bow, the Spirit Bear has to be spawned and killed another time which is why Stunning Thorn is the best way to speed up this fight. Using either a Tribal Spear or Bone Meringue, you can stun Thorn, holding him in one place and making him trivially easy to hit. All you have to do is hold down the ability and you can stand next to a decoy to avoid the onslaught of the bats. The downside is, in the event that the stun is lost, Thorn's movement will become chaotic, causing him to either move in a strange way back and forth or circle the arena at lightning fast speeds, making him essentially impossible to hit. So, don't lose your stun. The following drops are exclusive to and obtainable upon completing Floor 4. Floor 5's dungeon is yet again slightly bigger than the previous floor, with a minimum Catacombs level requirement of 14. There are no new puzzles in Floor 5, and the boss fight is pretty simple. Floor 5 sees the first appearance of Master Necromancer Livid, who is able to make several clones of himself, an ability I am jealous of. Like, imagine if I could clone myself, I could make videos 5 times more often. Bro, I could get like five times the amount of girlfriends. Okay, maybe that's still zero, but you get the point, okay? The best tactic to defeat Livid is to crowd your entire team into this corner and rely on AoE damage to kill the proper Livid, which you can use a solver to figure out. The color of the correct Livid is also displayed on the ceiling of the arena. A tank can be helpful if your team is struggling to survive the damage of all the Livids. The following drops are exclusive to and obtainable upon completing Floor 5. Floor 6 is weird. With a required Catacombs level of 19, the dungeon itself is actually smaller than Floor 5 and matches Floor 4's dungeon size. There are no new puzzles introduced in Floor 6, but the skill climb from Floor 5 to 6 is steeper compared to the previous floors due to the difficulty of the boss fight for lower Catacombs level players. 
The Necromancer Lord Sadan faces players in the boss fight of Floor 6, and his sequence is quite unique and among my favorite boss battles in Skyblock. Like the Professor, Sadan has three total stages. In his first phase, the arena will hold 16 terracottas that are reanimated when the fight begins. The DPS the terracottas deal can be overwhelming for new Floor 6 players, so a tank can really do wonders on this floor. The terracottas will respawn a short time after being killed. The first phase will run until Sadan's interest meter drops to zero, which takes 1 minute and 45 seconds. Every terracotta killed will reduce the phase by 1 second. Now I want to talk about the golems. There are 6 total sleeping golems, and attacking them will turn into woke golems. These golems do massive damage, and if your party can't survive both the golems and terracottas at the same time, you can kill the golems before the terracotta spawn. Standing on this pillar will put you out of reach of the golems. Just remember that killing the golems before terracottas can add up to 30 seconds to the run, so if you can survive both at the same time, I'd recommend doing both at one time. In Sadan's second phase, he will drop four giants from their cages in the room, each with their own unique attack. Killing these four giants will allow you to progress to the final stage, where a giant will be raised from the hole in the middle of the room. Sadan will combine forms with the giant, which will use a combination of moves that the previous four giants possessed. Killing Sadan in his giant form will end the Floor 6 run. Following drops are exclusive and obtainable upon completing Floor 6.